If you found your way to this video, then at some point you probably heard that the FCC was planning on banning these devices, so you went over to Amazon and slammed that buy button, like you should slam the subscribe button here on this channel, and then a few days later received a confusing little brick that speaks Chinese to you when you turn it on. I need to point out something right away. These radios are capable of transmitting at power levels well outside the allowed levels for different bands. They allow you to swap an antenna, they allow you to manually program in your channels, and all of this you usually need a GMRS or amateur license for. They're also known for polluting the radio spectrum a bit outside of their intended frequency. I'm not 100% sure that's still an issue, but considering these are mass produced in China, I wouldn't doubt it is. In the past, the FCC has approved some variants of this little radio as Part 90, but many of the existing stock on the market of these variants aren't even Part 90 approved. Part 90 certified means that the FCC has approved the device, or at least its combination of internal parts, as legally allowed to transmit on the LAN mobile radio service, but not legal to transmit on FRS or MERS. A radio needs Part 95 acceptance for FRS, GMRS, and MERS frequencies. All of this means that these are pirate or outlaw radios, unless used under very particular circumstances. If you have the particular type of Baofeng, which is actually FCC Part 90 approved, then you can legally operate these radios under amateur radio frequencies if you're a licensed amateur radio operator. Otherwise, you need a GMRS license and can only operate on those channels. In emergency situations, it's pretty safe to assume that you'll be fine broadcasting with a non-type approved radio if you absolutely have to, but let's focus on a normal day use case. The main rule is don't be an asshole. Don't crowd up frequencies where you can tell someone else is actively using it, and make sure you program your radio through a software like Chirp to ensure that your power levels are set where they need to be for your intended channels. I know a lot of you watching this video are here because basically no one on the internet wants to explain what frequencies you can actually use without having the FCC show up at your doorstep. I think this is mainly some kind of fear from the ham community who are afraid people are going to clutter up the frequencies by being negligent. The short answer is that for Airsoft or Milsim, if you want to do things legally, you can spend the $75 to get a GMRS license, which will allow you and all of your immediate family members to operate radios on the GMRS frequency if properly configured. Honestly though, anyone who's keen on learning communication should go out and get an amateur radio operator's license. It's $35 and will go a long way in teaching you valuable things about how radios work. There's plenty of study guides out there, so there's really no excuse not to get licenses either a ham operator or under GMRS. Alright, so let's talk about programming these radios. First thing you're going to need is a legitimate programming cable. If your cable came with a CD, don't even think about installing it. It's some hacked Chinese firmware of questionable quality and the chip in the cable is a knockoff that requires the modified drivers on that CD. Spend the 20 bucks on the legitimate cable and you should pretty much never have problems with it. Next, you're going to need the software Chirp. Most of you will be on Windows or Mac, so for those systems, we're going to head over to chirp.danplanet.com and click the download button, which will take you to the page where you can choose your operating system. Linux users can alternatively install Chirp through Flatpak and probably should install through the package manager rather than a manual install. Once you get done installing, open up Chirp and you'll be met with a rather empty looking window with a menu at the top. Go ahead and plug up your radio using the programming cable mentioned earlier, and once you're done with that, click the radio button in the top side menu. Next, we're going to go to Download from Radio, which will open a small window where we can select our radio. For this demonstration, I'm using a Baofeng UV5R, so I'll go ahead and select Baofeng under Vendor and UV5R under Model. Leave the port set to whatever COM port it's picked. It should automatically be whichever USB port the cable was plugged into. If everything was done correctly and you have a proper cable, you may notice a red light flashing on your radio while the software has a cloning progress meter. This is what we want to see. Give it some time to complete, and once it's done, we should be looking at a list of frequencies. If this is the first time you've connected your Baofeng, this list is probably going to be filled up with a bunch of stuff that we very likely do not want to transmit on. If you have the proper licensing to transmit on these frequencies, you definitely know, but I'm going to assume that you're a new user when it comes to radios. Alright, so we're going to hold down shift, click the very first channel, and then click the last channel on the list. Then hit the delete button on your keyboard. We're going to completely wipe this thing. So, this is usually the part where folks on YouTube would advise you to click the radio tab and then click import from data source and download the call channels. This is all well and good if you're a licensed operator and want to set up channels for things like repeaters, NOAA weather reporting, and your call channels, but that's all way out of scope for this video and we won't be needing most of them other than the US, FRS, and GMRS channels. I do strongly recommend you check out the Ham Radio Crash Course YouTube channel though, as Josh has provided us with around 5 solid years worth of knowledge on this subject. 
He has a video on programming these radios at a much deeper level that I'll have linked in the description of this video for those of you who really want to go all the way with learning your radios and this software. Many of you funding this video want this information for something like Airsoft or Milsim, where you want a line of communication that the enemy team can't easily intercept. I'm sure by this point you've seen someone tell you to just use privacy tones or something along those lines of making your comm secure through squelch or tone. And while I hate to be the bearer of bad news, that's not at all how that works. Tone doesn't do what many people think it does. Many people on the internet seem to be convinced that if you have a tone set up, then radios without one can't hear you transmit. That's actually the opposite of what a tone does. Essentially, adding a tone will make your radio ignore transmissions that don't have the same tone set up as yours. It does nothing to stop people with an open squelch from hearing your transmission, and the only way to prevent this is to have an encrypted band, which we can't do on these radios. I hear those keyboards clicking away already, so before you ham operators start angrily blowing up the comment section, just know that I am well aware that it is far more complicated than this. But I don't have the time or the patience to fully explain the inner workings of tone for a video like this. For those who want to deep dive into the rabbit hole, I've linked a video in the description from a channel called Variable titled Privacy Codes Are the Opposite of Privacy, which explains these tones far better than I ever could. I strongly recommend you check out that video, after this one of course, for further understanding of these tones. All of that being said, since we can't get encrypted channels and we can't use amateur ham bands, what the hell do we use? Well, this is the part where I say that you should have a GMRS license because that's the most legal way to use these. So obviously we're going to program in GMRS channels. Why GMRS? The license is $75. It's good for 10 years. Your entire immediate family will be allowed to use it, and if you're playing airsoft or doing milsim, there's pretty much no reason not to use these channels as it'll have plenty sufficient range. So let's look at Chirp again. We're going to click radio in the top menu, import from stock config, US FRS and GMRS channels. Uncheck all of the FRS frequencies that are listed. These should be listed as locations 1 through 22. Scroll down until you see GMRS 550-15R and all the other similar channels listed under it. These are all repeaters and they're unnecessary for this setup, so go ahead and uncheck those as well. Now that we have just the GMRS channels added, we can either change the 2 section to 0 using the adjustments at the bottom, or do it the easier way, which is to go ahead and click OK. You'll notice that the channels start at location 23. To fix this, we're going to hold Shift, click location 1 and 22 to select them all. Right click and go into the delete menu. Select delete and shift all memories up. At this point you should have 22 total locations filled starting at 0 and ending at 21. You now have all the GMRS channels set up on your radio. If you want just the highest power channels, feel free to delete everything up to GMRS 15 as 15 through 22 are allowed to transmit at 50 watts which is well above the max power level of our little Balfang. Just remember to shift all memories up if you delete more channels. Before we save though, let's take a look at the settings menu on the left side. I won't go over all of this as most are going to be way out of scope for this video, but I did want to mention that you can change the color of the LED screen on the basic settings menu. Standby color is obvious in use, RX is receive, and TX is transmit. Additionally, you can set a startup message in the other settings tab. Just edit the power on message 1 and 2 slots. You may have to play around to find out how many letters you can fit in here though. Some other settings worth looking at are the dual watch checkbox in advanced settings. This will allow you to hear both the A and B channels at the same time when others transmit on them. And the display mode settings in the basic tab, which I strongly recommend setting both to name if you're following this guide. That will show the actual GMRS channel name on the LED screen instead of the frequency. At this point, you can go to File and click Save As to save your settings as a file on your computer that can be easily imported to other radios via the Open button in the same menu, allowing you to quickly set up as many radios as you need. Go ahead and click the Radio tab at the top, upload to Radio, and click OK until you get back to the Clone Progress meter. Let the software do its work, and once disconnected, the LED screen should light up. That's it for programming, at least what you're going to get out of me.